doing today? Uh, 04 F6, Black Diamond Extreme Fuel Injection Pump Black Off Kit. Put it on my race sled. Uh, I don't even remember how many years ago now. The whole reason we were doing it was to get rid of the oil reservoir to remove the cap so we could get some venting down on our brakes. Um, really wasn't any reason other than that. I guess used to ride dirt bikes, so thought pre-mixing was cool. I don't know. Maybe not cool, but just not something I was unfamiliar with. So I didn't think much of it. Uh, ran into a situation with our F5 where we blew that up. I talked about that in another video, but going back through, I'm going to gonna put the oil injection back on this one because I got thinking about it the the oil injection pump is actually made to only meter as much oil as it's need as is needed based on throttle position um, that's why the connection on the throttle body is hooked right right to the uh, oil injection pump so I believe, I haven't read the book entirely yet on this, in fact, it's not allowed in the book on this, but I believe that wide open throttle it's set such that you are metering 32 to 1 uh, oil to fuel ratio. Um, but I believe once you're backing that off to idle, it actually backs the oil injection off to like a hundred to one or less. Um, when we were pre-mixing, we were pre-mixing at a ratio, but I was finding that this particular snowmobile, and actually both of them would, would load up really bad. Because when we're racing, you gotta line up in a staging line while you wait to uh, get released by the flagger. Um, but you gotta keep your engine running while it's sitting there to keep things warm and, and whatnot and be ready to go uh, but we finally load up so our, our hole shots were miserable at best typically um, so I'm wondering if if I don't put this back to oil injection if I don't reduce what I'm gonna call oil fouling at idle and and maybe improve the performance of my machine back to um, you know, go back to some factory settings back to some factory equipment and maybe get a better result out of it that's kind of what I'm hoping for but anyway that's theory and thought and stuff aside you can see I got the hood removed it's kind of my favorite first step on these is just easier to move around you don't got a hood falling on you and whapping you in the back of the head and pissing you off so Got the hood removed, pulled the air box out, pulled the throttle bodies up and out of the way. I didn't connect, disconnect them. And I thought about, well, maybe I'll pull the motor to do this, but I, I think I got enough room here. I should be able to, um, I should be able to, to put the fuel or the oil injection pump back in without pulling the motor out, which is good. It saves me some time. Um, I got the bolts loose on the, the BDX, the block off kit, and just so everybody knows, I had really good luck with that that kit. You know, you, you, you read the two or three guys online on the forums that talk about how they put the BDX kit in, and uh, you're not getting oil to the center crank bearings, and blah de blah de blah de blah and yeah, you know, there's probably accuracy to that theory, but I don't know how many hundreds or maybe thousands of miles I put on with with that block off kit and never had an issue. Now at, at the beginning of the year I would I would re-grease the uh, the bushing that's in that block off fitting and then shoot a little oil up into that that center cavity just to make sure there's some lubrication in there but that was about all I would do. Um, now maybe I wasn't putting enough miles on for it to be an issue. Don't know. I'm not going to theorize and try to fill you guys with some bullshit. I'm just saying I want to get better hole shots. 
we burned down an F5 because we were pre-mixing and pre-mixing light and not realizing the difference between your fuel to air ratio when you're pre-mixing and after and how you should step jet sizes up. Simple stuff, now that I've heard about it, but I don't know what I don't know. So sometimes learning the hard way is the best way. Uh, how that's going to affect injectors, I have no idea. Um, you know, now our the injector is only open in a certain size, whereas your, your carburetor jet's only open at a certain size. And yeah, don't know. Maybe I've been hard on this motor by doing doing the oil injection, or maybe maybe this particular motor, since it is EFI, maybe it's more uh, better suited to be ran as a premix machine. Don't know. All I know is I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna reapply the oil injection, I'm gonna give that a shot, see if I have a better result. If I lose performance because of it, um, I'm gonna keep my BDX kit and I'm gonna put it back in. It's as simple as that. I, I wanna keep, keep my performance at a level. Um, I, don't wanna, I don't wanna regress, so. Um, Back to what I was saying, hood off, throttle bodies off, airbox out. Um, I got got the bolts loose on the BDX kit. I'll kind of show you here. You can see down in there. This is the fitting there. Um, I believe it sits in there pretty snug. I can't move it with my hand, so I'll have to get a pliers on it to get it removed. There is another bolt on the bottom side where... On the injection pump itself, there is a banjo bolt that runs to the bottom side of the case, and that is what everyone was talking about. Well, do one search online, and you'll find everybody talking about how this is um, lubricating the center cavity between the two cylinders and between the two um, center crankshaft bearings. Basically, it's lubricating the cavity where your... your uh, oil pump water pump shaft rotates um, so there's just a bolt they have you run in there with that BDX kit um, I'll pull that bolt out and then we'll we'll refasten the banjo bolt in there um, but otherwise it'll sit on the unit like so this is your your control lever um, these supply oil to the intake boots, you know, based on based on throttle position, and then you attach your hose for your reservoir there. I'll talk a little bit about what we're gonna do for an oil tank quick because, as I mentioned, I moved the removed the oil tank that's factory to the fire cat. Um, yeah, I like not having it in there because I actually have some space up under here to do some things, and as you can see, I've done a few things back there for racing purposes but um, what I actually ordered was a oil reservoir off like an M series of a similar age so I, I think the one I specifically found on eBay was off a 2006 M7 um, on the on the M series sleds they actually put the oil bottle up here um, in front rather than back behind the steering post. They mounted right inside here. And I thought I thought and got to looking you know the chassis are about the same between the two. The bottle is relieved for the steering rod already so that everything would clear here. Um, so I'm kind of hoping I, I'll be able to put a reservoir in in here and have it fit with factory mounting holes on the reservoir and stuff instead of trying to figure out exactly where else I might mount a bottle. It was a good idea. A friend of mine who's had a lot of experience with these old fire cats and he gave me that idea so I can't take credit for, the, for that idea and I don't want to take any credit yet because I haven't got the, the bottle to make sure it's going to work. But. Um, 
No, it'll be interesting. It'd be pretty cool if that fits in there nice. Um, be kind of a, a nice setup. Go back to oil injection. You know, I've never... I don't want to say never. You go online, you'll always find the two guys that that had happened to, but those are the only two you ever find. You can't find the guys that had good luck and want to share that information. But never heard of oil injection pumps going bad necessarily. Um, so I feel like I'm going back to a little more reliable um, system, and then possibly getting some performance gains back out of it. So, pretty excited to get this back in and going.